Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the nutrition. As I said in one of the previous slides that the nutrition of fungi is heterotrophic. That is they always depend on other organisms for their food. They do not prepare their own food. So now let us see how do how exactly do they depend on others for their nutrition. They are heterotrophic. Some are saprophytes that is they feed on dead and decomposed matter as we all know sapro means rotten phytes means plants. So feeding on dead plants or animals they are called saprophytes. So fungi are saprophytes that you would have seen it for yourself when whenever something rottens you will see these kind of structures of fungi there because they love these kind of nutrition. Examples of uh, fungi which are saprophytes would be yeast, mushroom. You generally see such things on dead or decaying objects. However, they can also be parasitic. So some fungi can also be parasitic. That is, they can depend on other living plants or animals and obtain their nutrition from them. But at the same time, they can also cause disease because they are going to stay inside the body of another plant or animal. In fact, parasitic fungi are a main cause of diseases in plants. For example, here you can see in the picture, you see uh, this... Uh, Fungus beech strawberry, which causes cancerous galls on beech trees. So on these trees, you see these cancerous galls, these are caused by the fungus called beech strawberry. Similarly, if you look at this um, sheep, you see it has got facial eczema. You see some fungus like structure, this is facial eczema and it is caused by a fungus, Pithomyces charterum. So different types, there are fungi with different types of nutrition so these fungi are parasitic in nature they live inside the body of another plant like the beech tree or animal like the cattle or sheep here and then they obtain their nutrition from these organisms and in turn can also cause diseases in them so that is another mode of nutrition some fungi can also exist in symbiotic relationship with other organisms now what is this symbiotic relationship so when I say symbiotic relationship, it means a relationship in which both the organisms are benefited from each other. So fungi exists in a symbiotic relationship with other organisms like algae. And that symbiotic relationship is known as lichen. So we will talk about that a little later. So we see that fungi can be heterotrophic in terms of feeding on dead matter being saprophytes. So the examples are mushroom and yeast. It can be parasitic. You can see the examples here or it can exist in a symbiotic relationship and the ex example would be lichen. Okay, so with this let us now talk about symbiosis. Just now I told right it can exist in symbiotic relationship where both the organisms get benefits from each other. Let us talk about symbiosis in little more detail. So what kind of relationship am I talking about? An association between two or more species where one or both are mutually benefited. So let us look at this example which is shown on the screen where you see a honey bee is sitting on a flower. So who do you think in this association, who do you think gets benefited? Well in this case both of them gets equally benefited. That's because the honey bee gets nectar from the flowers and that is why it is here. At the same time the honey bee helps in pollination for the flowers. So the flower is also getting benefited. So both of them are dependent or they are not dependent but they get benefit from each other. And this kind of association where not necessarily both should get benefited, maybe one of them get benefited or both are get benefited, this kind of association is known as symbiosis. So let us look at the various symbiotic relationships. So even under symbiosis, there are many different types of symbiotic relationships. They are given different names depending upon 
whether one organism gets benefited or both gets benefited or how it is. So let us look at the different relationship. The first is obligate relationship. What is obligate? The word obligation. What does it mean? Obligation means something related to compulsion, right? We often use this term in our day-to-day -day life that um, this job is an obligation to me. That means it is a kind of constraint to me. So it, this relationship means organisms completely depend on each other for their survival. So they need that organism. Without that organism, they cannot survive. For example, if you, uh, if you take an example, let us suppose I, I give you an example. Uh, if I say that, let us suppose if you love pizza, but does that mean that you cannot survive without pizza? No, right? If you get it, you are happy. But even if you don't get it, you are okay with it. You can survive with many other food materials. But if I say that you can't survive without food, then that is true because you completely depend on food for your survival. So if you stop eating, it, it is difficult to survive, right? So obligate relationship means organisms completely depend on each other for their survival. They just can't do without each other. There is another relationship called facultative relationships. So this is exactly opposite of obligate relationship. Facultative means they are not dependent on each other for survival. However, if they are together, they can get benefits from each other. But it is not that if they are not together, they will not be able to survive. Then we have ectosymbiosis. Ecto. The word ecto means outside. So ectosymbiosis means one organism lives on the other. So one organism will live on the other organism. There is another one called endosymbiosis. The term endo means inside. So here one organism lives inside the other organism. For example, one best example for endosymbiosis would be, I was telling you right that your organisms like bacteria sometimes live inside our body. So that is an example of endosymbiosis because one organism that is bacteria is living inside the other organism that is human beings. Clear? So these are the four types of symbiotic relationships. So now let us look at um, some examples to understand these terms even better. So here we have some examples. So the first example is of the buffalo and the crow. So what kind of relationship is this? So do you think that the buffalo cannot live without the crow? First of all, what does the crow does when it sits on the back of the buffalo? Now on the body of buffalo, buffaloes are generally known for being dirty. So on the uh, body of buffalo, there are small insects which are present there, insects and ants, some small creatures are always present there. Now, whenever the crow sits on the buffalo, it starts eating up those insects. So it helps the buffalo in getting rid of those insects. So the buffalo is benefited. What happens to the crow? The crow gets benefited because it is getting something to eat. So the crow is also getting benefited. So this is a symbiotic relationship where both are getting benefited from each other. Now, if I ask you, what kind of symbiotic relationship is this? Do you think that the buffalo cannot survive without the crow? No, right? The buffalo can still survive without the crow. Because even if this, it is just that, it will survive with all those insects and ants. That's it. But it is, it is not directly dependent on the crow for its survival. But if the crow is there, it gets some benefits. So that means it is a facultative relationship. So this is a facultative symbiotic relationship. The next example is of the flowering plants and the honeybees. Here if you see the honeybees get their nutrition from flowers that is the nectar. So do you think that the honeybees have a second source of obtaining its food? No. So the honeybees are completely dependent on flowers for nectar. Now, what about the flowers? The flowers are also dependent on the honeybees for the process of pollination. 
So we can say that this is an obligate relationship. The relationship between human beings and their domesticated animals. So what do these domesticated animals do? They do as their master says. So they help the masters. And what happens to the human beings? So the human beings also get a help when these domesticated animals are there. But do you think that they cannot survive without each other? No, it is not like that, right? So it is not an obligate relationship. Again, if you take the example of lice present on the hair, you would have, you know, right? What is lice? I mean, if it is present in your hair, it keeps sucking blood from the skin. So the lice gets benefited. But what about the human beings? Our blood is going out. Right? So what kind of symbiosis is this? The one organism lives on the other organism. So this is an example of ectosymbiosis. Again, the microorganisms like bacteria being present inside the human body. So they get nutrients from the body. They can cause harm to the human. They cannot cause harm to the human. That again depends. But this is an example of endosymbiosis, that is one organism living inside another organism. Then you have the most popular example of symbiosis that is lichen, which is a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi. So here you can see these green colored structures are the algae and the yellow colored structures represent the fungi. So they are again both dependent on each other and they cannot live on their own. So this is an obligate relationship. So this is an example of obligate relationship. This is an example of ectosymbiosis. This is an example of endosymbiosis. So these are um, some of the examples of different symbiotic relationships. So let us now talk about lichen. As I said, it is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and blue-green algae. So how is it a symbiotic relationship? I mean, uh, how are each of them getting benefited? What is the benefit of fungi and what is the benefit of the blue-green algae? So let us have a look at that. So here algae are the blue-green algae. So what are blue-green algae? They are the cyanobacteria. So they have chlorophyll and they can prepare their own food by photosynthesis. So these algae can perform photosynthesis. So it can prepare food. So the fungi can get their food from the algae. So the algae is like a cook. So algae can pro prepare food and the fungi can get its food from algae. So that is how the fungi gets benefited. What about the algae? Now the fungi gives protection and shelter to the algae. So the algae gets a place to live. The fungi also protects the algae from any other external issues. So the fungi, so the algae also gets benefited. So one prepares food for the other and the other gives shelter and protection to the former. So if you, I mean, how do the lichens actually look like? If you look at this pic, picture it is seen as green or colored patches at the bark of trees so the algae provides food and give it to the uh, fungi and in turn the fungi protects the algae during um, hot sun so that it does not dry out it shades them from sunlight by enclosing it within their body now, one more thing to be noted here is that one fungus can form lichen with a variety of algal species. I mean, it is not necessary that only one fungi can form a like uh, form the lichen with only one type of algal species. Because even in al blue green algae, there will be so many types of species, right? So they can form a lichen with a variety of algal species. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.